My name is Amanda Graff and I teach at Waynesville Middle School. I teach seventh grade math and this is my eighth year teaching. If you have not yet written down your learning target for Tuesday, make sure that is down on your learning target paper. The students get this learning target and they need to write down, I can, whatever we're learning. And they keep this for two weeks and they turn it in at the end of the two weeks. And we'll kind of talk about the learning target. It's posted on the board, it's posted on the projector every single day. I use clickers just as a way to provide me really with information. I actually don't take any grades on clickers, but I use it as a way to provide me with immediate feedback right then and there. Go ahead and try that. Once you have all of the ones that you think are correct, you can enter it in your clicker. She definitely gives a lot of really good feedback. So if you're not getting something or you really got it, she'll make sure that you know. So a lot of times we work with another person on our team so that we can have like another brain to bounce off of and give feedback to each other. And I think that like just really helps. When I differentiate, I make sure that the groups are based on how they achieved on a certain skill. If you got three or two right, then you're doing yellow. So if you have three tallies or two tallies on your paper, and then if you got one right, you really don't know this stuff very well, I want you to try the red. As we're learning a certain learning target, like simplifying expressions, you might be in the red group for that skill. But another day, we're doing a different skill, and maybe you really understand that skill, and maybe you're in the green group for that. So the groups keep changing. The differentiation is based on what we do that day at that moment, how they're understanding their learning as we're progressing. The student learning definitely guides my planning. If it's something that most people have understood, I try to bring that into the next learning chart. So it's not something that we're forgetting, but it's something that gets brought into the next one. I'll have a side of the notes that is together and then a side of your notes that's on your own. And the together shows them a model. It shows them the process and we talk through it. We work through it as a class. We work through it in pairs sometimes, and then on the on your own, then can you take what we just modeled for you and do it individually? I try to incorporate a lot of games. If they're not seeing their progress, sometimes it doesn't mean as much, but you get to go up and click, or you get to go up and do something special that, that helps them stay motivated and um, want to keep progressing through the levels. The advice I'd have for starting formative assessment is have kids doing. The less you teach, it seems like the more they learn. You know, you don't need to have a 40 minute lesson. Just make sure the kids are doing as much as possible. I think she makes things really, really fun. And I think it just helps to make things even easier for us, just to have fun with it. She's a really good teacher. Like, she's like my all time favorite teacher. Like, I don't know, I just feel like she like, explains it well and then it also helps when we do like the stations because like it makes it fun to do stations but you're also learning at the same exact time. Fifth to me is just being a good teacher and knowing what your students are understanding as you're teaching. 